Um, good morning, everybody. Um, so like everybody else, uh, uh, I, 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 I start with you know, a, a heartfelt thanks for the Barnes Foundation to allow me to be uh, a part of this, uh, this fantastic event. Um, I feel uh, really, really honored to be in this really sort of distinguished company. And in my case, uh, my thanks uh, go uh, as well to the Yomiuri Shimbun. It's one of the uh, largest uh, uh, Japanese newspapers. And, uh, uh, and they supported uh, um, <coughs> generously uh, my, uh, the, uh, my travel uh, to here and, and back to Tokyo where I live and work. So, <laughs> um, yeah, and, yeah, and, and sp another special thanks uh, go to Claudine Grammont, uh, who kindly asked me to contribute to her uh, Dictionnaire Matisse, uh, about which she spoke uh, yesterday. So my presentation will be uh, largely based on uh, these two entries. One is about photography, and the other is about uh, states, the intermediary, intermediary states of in Matisse's uh, works. Uh, but you know, it's not uh, it's not exactly the same uh, text. So uh, um, yeah, and one other thing, I had a major uh, technical problem as I prepared uh, PowerPoint and uh, drafts for this talk. So. Uh, um, um, so it will be a little bit messy in parts, so I apologize profusely uh, before I begin. But uh, with that, I just plunge on. So my subject today is Matisse's so-called in-progress uh, photographs. Uh, by this term, uh, this term was coined by Jack Flam. Uh, by this term, I mean uh, the recording archiving and publication of Matisse's art making process uh, by means of photography, uh, which uh, uh, the activity which uh, Matisse uh, carried out uh, in a very sort of sustained manner. The photos, these, uh, for example, this is uh, the photos of the, the famous uh, 1935, uh, so-called the pink nude or large reclining nude uh, now in Baltimore. Uh, so these photos, uh, <coughs> excuse me, typically document uh, multiple stages in the gen uh, uh, during the uh, elaboration of a single work, uh, mostly paintings, but occasionally drawings and also cutouts. Uh, and these are all done by professional photographers. And these images uh, captured their objects, uh, so the uh, progress of, 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 of a work, in a rigidly head-on framing uh, with no or only very little hint of its surroundings, as you can see here, I hope. Uh, later, a small piece of paper was typically included to indicate the date of the shootings. The intervals between the shootings varied, mostly just a day or two, but occasionally spanning over a month. In fact, the photos were taken only when the artist decided that the work had reached some uh, a significant uh, stage. So, um, the, the, so these photographs then presented a kind of time-lapse vision of the paintings process or drawing process uh, with, uh, with certain amount of gaps left uh, in between uh, for, the, for the viewers to fill in by their imagination. Even so, Matisse's photographic archive surpassed any similar attempts uh, in its comprehensiveness, meticulousness, and consistency, at least uh, in, in his time. So think of, yeah. Uh, think of Picasso with his uh, celebrated photographs by Dora uh, Mar uh, of uh, 1937 Guernica. Uh, so so Dora Mar took this photograph uh, uh, here on the, on the left uh, as the gigantic canvas came into being uh, in 1937. So far better known as a document of its kind, the Guernica uh, photographs nevertheless remain one of the only two known such instances. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but uh, <coughs> as far as I, as I know, <coughs> this is just one of the only two known such, uh, uh, such instances in as Picasso's vast oeuvre. The other being, 
uh, the Chernal House, now in MoMA, 1944-45. Uh, and this, uh, despite the fact that Picasso expressed in 1935 a strong interest in, quote, preserving photographically not the stages but the metamorphosis of a picture. And I think uh, these words apply uh, equally well to the Matisse's uh, in-progress uh, photographs. So um, the history of Matisse's in-progress photography can be divided into two phases. The first phase, which was roughly the decade between 1906 and 1916, is already striking with examples like uh, the famous uh, autochrome uh, of harmony in red. Uh, autochrome is, a, is an early color photography technique uh, that was the first, I think, the first uh, color uh, photograph. Uh, photography technique that was available, um, that was widely commercially available. So the famous autochrome of Harmony in Red from 1908 that shows the canvas here on the right uh, in its uh, early blue dominated state. So there is at least one eyewitness account from this period, uh, actually uh, from around the fall of 1910, that by then Matisse had compiled a quote, a large portfolio full of photographs, which he brought out to show, quote again, in beautiful uh, proofs, I mean, photographic prints, uh, the process of several of his works. So it is thus tempting to conclude that already in this period, uh, Matisse's in-progress photography was a fully established uh, practice. Uh, the, the body of uh, evidence, or uh, the corpus, corpus we currently possess, however, suggests a much more desultory affair. Uh, first of all, the choice of the works to be photographed uh, seems rather random. For example, why only Harmony in Red and not the Red Studio, uh, even though uh, this one too underwent a, a very radical change in its overall color scheme. In fact, uh, it is unclear how actively the, uh, the artist was involved in their you know, selection of the works to be photographed. And purely practical concerns seem to have played their role too, such as the need to keep his dealers and patrons uh, abreast of an ongoing project, which was surely the case with the 1910 music. Uh, that's, you have two uh, photographs uh, in progress photograph of the, the work on the right, uh, 1910 music. Uh, so so, this, um, so this, these photos were definitely made for the, the Russian patron who commissioned uh, this work uh, with uh, Dance 2 in 1910, around 1910. So other early, oh yeah, and, and, and you know, so this need to uh, keep uh, his patrons updated uh, was also uh, at work uh, with all those photographs that I will be uh, showing later uh, of the dance uh, mural up there, upstairs. So other early instances, for example, Nymph and Theater from 1908 and Pink Studio from 1911 may well have been made at the behest, not of the artist himself, but of his gallery at the time, the Berlin Jeune, which is known to have frequently ordered uh, this kind of photographs of the works in its care as part of their sort of stock taking uh, routine. So uh, it seems safe to presume that even though mentioned quite casually here, this happy coincidence in fact greatly alarmed Matisse and sort of like it spurred him to practice sort of one upmanship in this you know domain the documentation of you know the genesis of their work by publishing you know uh, 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 his own uh, photographs and uh, as a side note uh, this might this is partial answer to uh, uh, Cecile's uh, question uh, because uh, she uh, wondered at some point during her presentation that if uh, Matisse was thinking about uh, Picasso, uh, Picasso's you know, print series, Volar Suite, uh, when uh, Matisse was working on this uh, uh, wonderful uh, drawing series, uh, themes and variations. So I'm not sure if uh, Matisse uh, was thinking uh, of, about Picasso in 1941, uh, 42, 43, but definitely uh, Picasso's uh, 
prints uh, specifically, so these uh, uh, Volard suite uh, were uh, on Matisse's mind uh, in early 1930s. So he, he definitely um, thought about it. All right, so, uh, so there was this uh, kind of you know, comp competition you know, uh, uh, between Matisse and Picasso happening, but more, more importantly, perhaps, these publications took part in what might be termed Matisse's media campaign. This uh, he had al already been pursuing for some time, but only in verbal forms, such as interviews and published texts. The main objective here was to counter uh, and sort of preempt the accusations insistently leveled at his art. The stark simplicity of Matisse's works often caused inattentive viewers to dismiss them as too easy, too facile, and if effortless. So the process photos refuted this sort of widespread misconception by unveiling the, the often really staggering amount of time and energy that went into you know, those, uh, these pictures of production. So each publication of the in-progress uh, photos was intended to perform such sort of you know, rebuttal. So here's another example. So this is a, a, a journal article from 1946, uh, which reproduces uh, four, uh, three uh, states fo uh, photos of the uh, the, 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 la, la, la Brusselman, the Romanian blouse from 1939 40, which you will, be, uh, you will see later again. Um, so, um, so, it, uh, so, so there was this kind of a sustained media campaign through publication, but the most spectacular uh, you know, effort in this sort of the whole media strategy remains the now famous exhibition at the uh, Paris Gallery, uh, Galerie Marc, in December 1945, uh, where Matisse hung half a dozen of his, sorry, this is a, another example. Yeah, so this is the, uh, the show the, at the Gary Mark in December 1945. So where Matisse hung half a dozen of his, his recent uh, canvases side by side with their photographic documents. Matisse mounted two more exhibits uh, with uh, the same conceit of photos uh, and paintings juxtapositions between fall of 1945 and early 1960, uh, 1946. So going back to publications, uh, these you know, uh, journal articles and books uh, soon became part of what might be termed, uh, sorry, excuse me, I was just a, um, yeah, so I have, Actually, uh, and now I want to focus on you know, this ex really extraordinary exhibition. So I have always been intrigued by the fact that for the two main installations in, the, uh, in this show, meaning uh, so the, the, the Romanian uh, blouse and, and the dream, uh, both from 1939-40. So for these two sort of main installations of, uh, of this show, Matisse ignored or uh, deliberately confused the chronological order of the photographs. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, I don't have time to, you know, sort of like a compare uh, um, the, 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 the right order, a right chronological order in, 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 the, in, in the installations here, so you, you're going to have to kind of, you know, take my word for it, but, um, no, th so this is really sort of the cr chronology is completely mixed up for the, uh, the, the, the Romanian blouse and, and, and partially, but, you know, nonetheless sort of um, very conspicuously for the dream as well. Uh, so there's that, and I, um, so one, possible interpretation is to see this gesture, so this, you know, this deliberate uh, mixing up, as emphasizing the fragmentation and disjunction that define the evolution of both of these canvases. Actually, in general, the, the, the in Matisse's in-progress photographs show a relatively linear development that steadily advanced from the beginning to the end. So here I take the example of uh, this uh, work, uh, which is in the Philadelphia Museum. Um, so, um, first, let me just walk you through the process.
Oops, okay. So, um, by contrast, uh, uh, the Romanian blouse and also the dream, uh, the states constitute no such a continuous sequence, or well, not for long. So drastic changes occur periodically, each of which abruptly sort of steer the picture into an altogether different, utterly sort of unforeseen directions. So here's another change occurring here. Oh, sorry. So uh, that's what I am referring to as sort of the uh, you know, fragmentation and disjunction in the process of these works. So the fragmentation and disjunction of these uh, you know, two paintings, this and, uh, I have, uh, unfortunately, I can't show you the, the whole process of the dream, but it, uh, this applies bo to, bo uh, to both of these paintings. So the fragmentation and disjunction were indeed a source of great concern for Matisse at this time. Uh, at a sort of conscious theoretical level, at least, Matisse seemed to believe that the act of painting should proceed logically and securely, and the photographs ought to confirm this notion, this conception of painting process that Matisse had. That is how he presented uh, his in-progress photography in an interview from October 1945, namely when he was de uh, designing the, the Marg exhibition. And this is actually the only uh, known, like a published reference that Matisse made to his in-progress photography. Quote, I have my conception in my head and I want to realize it. I can't very often reconceive it, but I know where I want to end up. The photos permit me to know if the last conception conforms more to what I am after than the preceding ones, whether I have advanced or regressed. So despite its confident tone, um, the statements, this uh, interview, uh, were, uh, the, what he said in this interview were contradicted by uh, so, you know, the, the, the works he was producing at the very, uh, just a few years ago, uh, before. The non-linear, disconnected nature of their development. I might, I should probably go back to the whole thing. So, um, so uh, the non-linear, disconnected nature of the development belied the straightforward progress evoked in the interview. The, uh, the Mag show uh, and, and its disturbance of the chronology then uh, may have visually sort of, you know, it would, may have been an attempt to sort of visually stage, you know, this contradiction between uh, Matisse's discourse and practice. If the picture's trajectory uh, did not obey any sort of single uh, logic, one should be able to freely rearrange its segments and the effect, the result, would be the same. If that was the idea, it seems to have been confirmed, but only sort of negatively, you know, by the total silence on the part of commentators. So uh, until this day, no com really no um, comment uh, has been made on this uh, uh, very a peculiar aspect of the Mark exhibition. If I seem to be making too much of this, uh, you know, this sort of what may have been just a simple mistake, I would like to point. I would like to point out that uh, this kind of a chronological or non chronological installation at the at the, the Galerie Mark show was not an isolated uh, instance in Matisse's work. There was indeed a precedent, a significant one at that. So when Matisse was working on his so set of right, the drawing series, themes and variations between 1942 and 1943, he pinned these sheets, I'm oh, sorry. I have to, you have to, sorry. I, I have, I can do this only sequentially. So, so this is one of the part of the, 
uh, themes and variations. So, um, so when Matisse was working on this series, he, Matisse pinned the sheets up on a wall of his studio in Nice in multiple registers, as you can see here, even though a letter from A to P and a number were inscribed to assign each sheet a specific place within this, you know, this series. Again, the artist largely ignored the original order in the wall arrangement. And here again, I, I don't have time to, you know, to look, you know, show you the uh, magnified, uh, you know, uh, that zoom, uh, zooming in to show, you know, to prove my point. But uh, he, here too, you know, uh, the chronology was completely uh, disobeyed. Um, in the case of themes and variations, the reason for this sort of idiosyncrasy is clear. In his commentaries on the series, Matisse often stressed that the drawings were discrete units, individually separate and distinct. So even though all the sheets shared the same motif, uh, all the sheets of a given series shared exactly the same motifs, um, these sheets were not to be understood as sort of repeated, gradually improving attempts to you know, better capture that shared motif. So uh, Matisse declared, for example, to Louis Aragon, uh, each drawing is perfect as it is already. So there's no sort of like uh, progression or evolution toward uh, perfection here. So it is to put a sort of visual stress on uh, this aspect that he, uh, Matisse adopted this, I think, uh, the a chronological hanging. So in addition, as Evelyn has pointed out long ago in his 1999 book, Matisse and Picasso, when Matisse published these themes and variations drawings as a book, as a, as a wonderful portfolio, uh, he had the drawings printed as separate uh, uh, plates, which the reader slash viewer can shuffle like a deck of cards. So here again, they, I think the purpose, uh, the, the aim was to demonstrate uh, the radical sort of openness uh, of the structure in a non-linear, you know, uh, but open kind of structure. And uh, I would argue that the same interest in the openness uh, drove the Mog exhibitions hanging as well. So uh, going back to uh, the history of in progress photography, the Matisse show, uh, the Mag show turned out to be the greatest, but also the last public showing of Matisse's in progress photographs. Afterwards, the publication of the photos recurred only rarely, if any, at all. In fact, Matisse seems to have uh, stopped having them taken completely for a few years until the beginning of the 1950s. By then, Matisse had abandoned oil painting almost completely and moved into new territories, notably the paper cutouts, uh, which we will be uh, hearing uh, about uh, a lot later today. As has often been pointed out in the literature, one of the most striking aspects of Matisse's cutouts, uh, cutout is the radical sort of mobility of uh, its elements, especially uh, during 1947-1948. Yeah, so this is the published version. Uh, especially during 1947-48, when he filled the walls of his various studio or, and or apartments with smaller works done in this technique, cut out. A color or shape uh, initially created for a given composition uh, could freely migrate to another composition on the same wall or another wall. And, and they form a new and often quite different relationship with the elements uh, that, that are already there. Uh, with the physical boundaries of a given work now crossed so easily and frequently, the rigid framing centered on the individual object uh, will be uh, probably uh, completely um, uh, irrelevant. Sorry. I Sorry, I'm looking for the last page of, uh, I'm almost at the end. <laughs> but the end is missing. Okay, so um, I'll just improvise. Um, so with the, with the, uh, so with the new uh, color technique, you know, this, uh, this format sort of like really uh, narrowly centered uh, on uh, individual objects kind of format that he adapted for uh, all the, uh, all the imp uh, imp his Matisse's in progress photography would be completely redundant. 
So um, from this point on, and I'm so sorry, uh, I, I don't have the slides for them, but um, I think uh, the, the traditional or the, the, the previous uh, in-progress photography uh, would be replaced by these uh, shots, these photographs of his studio, uh, photographs that uh, show us sort of the, the, the entire, sort of the whole environment uh, of uh, uh, working and living environment of Matisse, and uh, where you can sort of trace uh, this like really free movement uh, a color or shape, uh, their free movement from one wall to another and uh, from one composition to, to another. So um, the in, pro in progress uh, uh, photography disappeared again, and this time for good. But uh, of course, uh, its disappearance uh, once again uh, marked a very important shift in Matisse's work. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>